What's up everybody, MCP servers, it's all the rage these days. I'm gonna show you how to create your own and it's gonna have two different tools. So we're gonna create our own design course MCP and the first tool will be Hello World, just so you can understand at a very basic level how you create them and how they work. And then we'll create kind of like a Shad CN replica where let's say if you're a designer and you're a developer and you want to create your own UI library that other people can use, like in Cursor or Windsurf or whatever, or Cloud Code, well then you can create that then. So you can create a bunch of components that are awesomely styled. People love it, they want to use it. I'll show you how to create that MCP server, at least in a local environment. All right, everybody, you ready to rock? We are going to open up a new terminal here in Cursor. You can use any other code ID, at E, it doesn't matter. Um, and as you can see, I have a blank folder opened up over here. There's no files in it. So we are starting from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to run NPM. And this means you have to have the node package manager installed into your system. If you don't know how to do that, just chat GPT it, whatever. And we want to um, init hyphen Y. Hyphen Y simply means we're gonna say yes to all the default prompts. Um, and it's gonna generate what's called a package.json file which basically allows you, um, or not you, but you know the system itself, to keep, keep control over what type of packages are gonna be installed that are necessary for this project to work. So as you can see, it kind of um, just filled out all this information for us and created that package.json file. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we wanna install a, uh, a specific MCP server uh, library. And so the code for that is going to look like this. All right, so let me just extend this out. This is the line right here, npm i for install, at model context protocol SDK. All right, that's the next very necessary step. And once you hit enter, it's just gonna install it. You'll see um, a couple other files here. You can ignore the package lock JSON. And we also have the node package or the node modules folder, which will store all this stuff that we don't have to worry about. You don't wanna touch anything in there. You just set it and forget it essentially. So every time you install, you use NPM to install something, it's gonna go in the node modules folder and a reference will be created in package.json. As you can see as a dependency, model context protocol is right here. Okay, this is all basic JavaScript stuff. So after that, we have one more line and we are going to run right here, this little line, node package set type of module. Again, just basic JavaScript stuff that we don't have to really worry about. So once you have those three things ready to go and you've already ran them, the next step is we wanna create a server.js file. So up here, I'm just going to click this icon new file server.js. Okay, so this is gonna be where we store the main MCP uh, information for our custom MCP server that's gonna run locally. So for this this part, we are gonna take a look at the, the JavaScript, but n n at a very high level overview. Obviously in this day and age of AI coding, we really don't have to necessarily code in, in many respects, um, but it's gonna help you to understand at a high level, um, under the hood look view of how the MCP server works. And I think that will help you in de deciding what type of MCP servers that you can create. Uh, so the first two lines, and this is set up into four different steps, and there's not a lot of code. Um, the first step is you need to import a couple packages from the node package manager um, that we installed that that um, over here, what was it called? The model context protocol stuff. So we have to import that stuff into server.js. And that looks like this up here in these two lines. So import MCP server from model context protocol, blah, blah, blah. And then also the studio server transport. And if you hover over it, it will tell you what this stuff does if you really wanna get a specific information. But again, this in the context of creating an MCP server, this is set and forget. All right, now the next step is to create the actual server. So that looks like this. It's just simply one line. Const server is new MCP server. And again, this comes from this here being imported. And then this is where you specify the name. So I'm gonna call this design course. Just, I'm not gonna add the MCP. This is just gonna be called the design course MCP server. So that's how you reference it in the LLM. That's how you would tell other people who wanna use it. That's, that's how you call it, right? Um, and then version, you know, you can put this whatever type of versioning you want. 
Now, the third step is to actually create the tool. You, you can create multiple tools inside of an MCP server that do different things. So for the very first simple example, hello world, what would that tool call actually look like? Well, the way that looks is if I zoom up, we simply say server. Remember, we just created a constant or a variable called server. So we call server and we're going to say register tool. So the very first argument here is going to be the name of the tool. All right, this is what shows up um, when we go to the chat settings and we look at the MCP servers and you, you look at all your different MCP servers and you're able to look at the tool specifically, this is the name. So I'm just gonna write, put this in quotes, hello world. That's gonna be the name of our very first tool. And then we're gonna put a comma and then open it up in brackets uh, or squiggly braces like that. Now, this will accept a few property values so we have title such as hello world a description and again this is important here because it's going to allow you to specify instructions and you know basically on, on what this tool does we'll see um, examples of this in my mcp servers as well and then we have an input schema and they're basically arguments that can be accepted by the tool we don't need that for this hello world example it's going to be super simple now the next part we're gonna put a comma after this closing squiggly brace bracket and paste in this information right here. So right here, we have async return content type is text and the text is gonna be hello world. All right, so that's all this tool does. It's so simple, it just returns hello world. Of course, we're gonna be doing the, the more you know elaborate example here just after we get this working. So this is like one of the most simple tools that you could call. And then step four is this one set and forget property that you'll see these two lines um, for getting everything ready and basically finalizing the MCP server setup. So that is these two lines right here. Again, this uh, server transport, that was the second import that we had and then await server connect transport. There we go. That's all we need for our MCP server. So now, if you come up here, um, hit Control L if we're working on cursor at least, um, and that will toggle this chat area. You can come up right here to these three circles and click chat settings, and then you'll see tools and integration. And if you click that, you will see all of your MCP soul, uh, MPC souls, MPC tools. All right. In order to get this in integrated, we want to click on new MCP server. Now I have this open, but I have all of my keys visible. <laughs> uh, so I'm not even going to look, it showed part of it right there. I'm not even going to um, show you up there. I'm just going to paste in what you would see um, or paste or what you would use if you have no existing MCP servers. It would look like this. All right, so you have an MCP servers object, and then you have all your individual MCP servers inside of that. Um, and then for this, our example, we wanna know exactly where our server.js is being um, served from. So if I just right click this and reveal in file explorer, I'll see right up here that I have this URL right here. So what I would do is just paste this in. Again, this is for local. And what I would do is just, uh, we can forward slash these or double uh, slash them. There we go. And this needs to also specify server.js. All right, so that's all you would do. And if you have existing MCP servers, you just copy this part. So right up here, I would put a comma after my last um, MCP server. And then I would just paste this right here. So now we save, we go back and you will see design course, one tool enabled, click it, hello world. That is coming from our server.js right here. Okay, so now we should be able to use our IDEs chat. You can use uh, Claude code, whatever. Um, to now reference this like you normally would any other MCP server. So what I could say is um, create a response.txt file in the project root and use the design course MCP server to uh, call the hello world tool and output the response in the text file. Eh, let's try using uh, 
Grok 4 for the heck of it. And we'll see if it calls the tool. It should give like an initial response here. Go, hello world. Click on it, no parameters. Respawn is hello world. Response.txt, it's created already. And hello world. Okay, that is the most boring, simple example of an MCP server with a tool that we defined that gives us a response. Now let's do something that's more rural world worthy, right? So we all know this, well, no, we don't all know, but ShadCN is a component library for designers and front-end developers to integrate cool things. Um, and they, they have their own MCP server as well. And you can literally call it to maybe integrate a header component into your page or something like that. Um, what if we created something similar, like our own MCP server for our own custom UI library that we're creating because we're a, dev a developer and a designer or something, right? So what's cool about this part, we can ask AI to generate the tool for us um, based on our requirements. So maybe we'll have a separate directory of components that are based on HTML files, maybe one for a nav bar, one for a button, something like that, one for an effect, like a confetti effect. And then we'll have it create a single tool that maybe it's called get components that I will then, based on user input, it will query the tool. The tool will know which correct component to choose and then return that code so that the AI can then integrate it based on the user specification in the prompt. Now, before we get to this part, whenever you have any type of input specified, like in the input schema, um, you wanna import or install MPMI, it's called Zod, Z-O-D. Now again, if you don't understand this or whatever, I mean, this is the boilerplate stuff that AI would give you anyways, it would know to install this. So don't be freaked out by that. We're also gonna import a few more packages, so import Z from Zod, and then because we're gonna have to deal with files and, and like grabbing HTML files, we're gonna import these two as well. I had AI generate a tool, so it's gonna call service register tool as well, and I'm gonna paste all of that in. Now, I'm gonna make this um, code available, this JavaScript here in the description, so you can just go to um, CodePen and grab this if you want the same exact. Um, tool essentially. So we can see right here, we're calling this DC components. Um, let's just call it components. And we'll call this design course components for the title. And then returns a component snippet from components type HTML. So we need to create that folder. I'm going to call it components. All right. And then inside of there, we'll have our individual um, button component, as you can see here a nav bar component and a confetti component. All right, so we're gonna have AI generate those for us, okay? Um, and then all this other stuff, all it's doing is basically looking at the inputs, like if they specify button or nav bar or confetti inside of their prompt, um, then it's gonna know which HTML file to use that's inside of um, components. And then it will rip the HTML and CSS in that file and pass it over as context in its response. AI is gonna take that and then integrate it however we specify. Um, so that's what this looks like. So now I'm just gonna hit save. And if we go back to our chat settings and our tools and integrations, we restart this. We can see now we have both of our elements. So we're, where it says components here, this is the description at the top, and then there's parameters here at the bottom. Okay, so now that that's ready to rock, we can tell it, uh, our AI, to build those three things for us. Now, obviously, if you, this is a serious project, you'd probably be you're trying to do this stuff by hand, ensuring everything you know for your component library is very consistent, but this is just a quick demo. All right, so create three HTML files that are consistent with the ones referenced in the components tools, uh, in the components tool in the server JS. The nav bar should be responsive and work on mobile, tablet, and desktop. The button component should be blue with rounded corners, and the confetti HTML file should include any necessary HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that results in a confetti animation. It's intended to be used in this context. Add a confetti animation on my button when somebody clicks it. Let's hope that this will work, and it creates those files in the components folder consistent with what it finds in server.js. Uh, 
All right, so it has them generated. Um, let's right click, open with live server. Here is our button. It's actually a pretty nice button. Let's go ahead and actually call and utilize it. So what I'll say is um, using the design course MCP server, if I can type, create a, no, not create, implement the navbar component and a button component in an index.html file. Use the hello world tool uh, to create a headline with the response as well. Now we'll have it integrate the um, confetti stuff after. So um, we'll also say um, set this template information up, assuming we are a company called Quick Snacks in the food industry. All right, let's hit send. Again, make sure you routinely go back to your chat settings. Make sure the MCP server isn't, it doesn't have the red status because it means it won't work. So calling MCP, please work. All right, so it got them. If it didn't properly fetch them, you can click on um, you know the actual result and it'll say, um, it'll tell you if it errored or whatever. And usually the LLM will also say that it errored as well. Um, you want to make sure that it just doesn't manually just grab the HTML from these itself uh, because it'll trick you into thinking that it worked through the MCP server. All right, it is done. Right click, open with live server. Ooh, <laughs> interesting choices. We can see our um, blue order now button. That's the component that we used. That is very cool. So now let's say for instance uh we wanted to integrate the confetti animation of sorts now i don't know how it set that up it's not visible here but it, i'm sure it is in the html that it would be able to work because there's also javascript in here as well and css so now what we'll say is let's say for instance we want a confetti animation to occur when somebody clicks on the order now but we want you know the design course mcps confetti animation because we really like that one that's the utility in having the mcp server yeah we could have it create its own you know confetti animation through ai itself but what if we really like you know that you know, the one that's based on this this ui library well that's why we use the mcp server so what we'll say is uh use the design course mcp server to integrate a confetti animation when somebody when someone clicks on the order button in the hero section of index.html. Um, so that was an order button, correct? Yes, okay. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Our confetti component, I believe, yes. That means it called the right tool. All right, let's see if it worked. Let's go back to the server here. Oh. <laughs> it has this stupid pop-up and we see the confetti animation occurring but this stupid order feature coming soon is showing up but as you can see it's kind of weird initially and then it kind of falls down but yeah that is it i that's the confetti animation so there you go i very powerful this can open up a whole new world of opportunity for different ideas that you can create just for your own personal use like a local uh, MCP server or something that you can also extend for other people to use as well. I'm sure you could prompt the AI to be like, okay, adjust my MCP server so that, you know, other people can use it and give me instructions and all that stuff on how to deploy it. Um, but yeah, very exciting to be able to utilize this new technology in the context of AI. And I think there's going to be a lot of really cool MCP servers popping up once people start to realize, hey, I can build my own MCP server. Make sure to check out designcourse.com. I'm covering all this stuff. Subscribe up. I am pumping out videos left and right. All things AI, design, and dev focused. I will see you all soon and goodbye.